Everyone Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I asked the community the other day if they'd like to see what I do before I deploy a Ubiquiti network. So how I do the pre-configuration, labeling of the access point switches and so on and so forth. I put a poll out on the channel and out of the 450 votes, we got 94% of people that wanted to see that. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And I'll also answer a couple questions that people had. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit MacTelecomNetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at MacTelecomNetworks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have affiliate links and I'll put it in the description below. So first let's look at a bit of the design. What we're gonna have here for gear is a UDM Pro as our firewall and we're gonna have a Switch Pro 24 PoE. We're also gonna have a secondary switch, which is the Switch 16 PoE. And we're gonna have 17 U6 Pro access points. This is for a hotel. I'm still waiting on a few of those access points and some of them are just gonna be spare in case one dies. So this is how it's gonna be laid out. We have our internet connection coming into our UDM Pro. From the UDM Pro, we have the SAP Plus LAN port plugging into our Switch Pro 24 PoE. Where the secondary IT closet is, is in another wing of the hotel. We can't run any cables there because it's all drywalled up and has already been painted and they don't want us running new cables or cutting holes. There are two existing drops going back to the main IT closet, so we're gonna utilize those. So for that, there's a few ways we could do it. We could either do a lag between the Switch 16 PoE and the Switch Pro 24. So we would have two cables connecting between there. If one of the cables gets cut, we would still have that backup. So if this Switch Pro 24 PoE dies, we won't have any connection to the Switch 16 PoE. So what we're gonna do, we'll have one connection going to the 24 port Pro, and then we'll have another connection going to the UDM Pro. And we'll be using spanning tree protocol. So the one connection going to the UDM Pro will be in blocking state as you can see here. So if our main Switch connection goes down, we'll still have connection to the Switch 16 PoE. There's only gonna be a couple access points running off this Switch 16 PoE. The majority will be going off of our Pro Switch. Now the next step, what we need to do, I need to unpackage all of the gear behind me, get it all plugged in, and then we'll start labeling the access points. We'll update the firmware of the access points, and then we'll do a bit of the base configuration. So first we're gonna start with getting the switches. I already have the UDM Pro unboxed, so we'll get the switches and then we'll start doing the access points. Okay, now all of the access points are unboxed, so are the switches. What we need to do now is label everything. So we'll be putting a sticker on just above the U on these access points. And these are the stickers that we're gonna use. It's just gonna be easy to identify. I'll cut these out and then stick them on each one of the access points. And we also have one for the switches and the UDM Pro. The reason why we put labels on the firewall and the switches is if I need one of the staff on site to power cycle one of these, it's easy to identify. And then you can see here that we have our labels all on our access points. So now we need to get these all plugged into the switches. All the APs are now wired into the switches. It's a big mess of cable as you can see, but that's how these pre-configurations go. We have a DAC cable between our Switch 1 and our UDM Pro, and then we have a cable from the Switch 2 going into the Switch 1, and a cable from Switch 2 down to the UDM Pro, which will be utilizing spanning tree protocol, which is a loop prevention protocol. So now I need to get these powered up 
we'll go back to my computer and we'll get it all configured. So I'm plugged into the UDM Pro and we need to do the basic setup. And I've already set up this UDM Pro as I was testing site to site to site VPNs. So the UDM Pro itself is up to date with the firmware. So we'll set up UDM Pro. We'll give it a console name, I'll call it hotel, and then we'll agree to the end user license. We'll say it's for a business and this is gonna be hospitality and there'll be about one to a hundred employees and we'll press next. Now we're at step three, which we could either sign in with our single sign on because the UDM Pro is up to date on its firmware or we could skip and create a local user account. I'm just gonna use my single sign on and then we'll press next. It's asking us for update schedule. I'm gonna turn that off. And then it's asking if we wanna send diagnostics. I'm gonna leave that off as well. And it's gonna start a speed test. I'm just gonna skip this. And we'll put in what our expected speeds are. So 1000 by 40, we'll have to upgrade this when we get to site because they do have a different internet speed. Now this last part, we just need to confirm and finish the setup. Now we're into the UDM Pro and let's make sure that we are at the latest stable firmware. We'll click on settings and we'll go to updates and we could see that it's up to date and the network controller is at 70.23, which is the latest stable network controller. So let's click on the network controller. We can see the dashboard, there's not much there as this is a brand new install. So we need to click on our devices and we can see under our devices that everything is pending adoption besides the UDM Pro. So I'm gonna start with our two switches and then we'll move on to the access points. Now all of the switches and access points are adopted into the controller and we could see that they're updating, which is great. So now let's create a few basic networks and a few basic firewall rules. So I'll go into my settings and then we're gonna go under network. So for this business, we're going to have a staff and a guest network. The guest is the most important as it's a hoteling business. So we'll create new network. I'm going to call it staff. And then we're going to uncheck auto scale. The subnet I'll give it is 192.168.10.1. And then we need to go under advanced configuration, click on manual and change the VLAN ID. You can leave it at default, but I like to match my third octet to the VLAN ID. So that will be 10 and then we'll press add network. We'll create one more network for the guest. So I'll call it guest. And then I'm gonna give them an IP of 192.168.30.1 and we'll go to manual and select the VLAN ID of 30. Now we can see we have choices for our network type. It says standard and guest network. So in the old interface, the standard would be a corporate and the guest would still be a guest. So we'll create a guest network. We'll put on family content filtering and then we'll press add network. Next, I'm gonna do some firewall rules. I won't be creating any Wi-Fi networks as the management team hasn't told me which SSIDs they want. So we'll go into firewall and security and we're gonna click create new port or IP group. This first group is gonna be called RFC 1918, which is just all of our private IPv4 addresses. So 192.168.0.0 slash 16, 172.16.0.0 slash 12, and 10.0.0.0 slash eight, and then we'll apply the changes. Now I'll go back to my firewall rules. We'll create a new rule. Now we'll create our first firewall rule, and this will be to allow the default network to access everything. So we'll create new rule. It will be done under the LAN in, and I'll say allow default to all VLANs. The action is gonna be accept, the protocols will be all, the source type will be a network, and that network will be our default. The destination will be in port IP group of our RFC 1918. And the only other rule that I create before I deploy on site is the block inner VLAN routing. So we'll create a new rule. It will be done under LAN in, and that's what I'll call it block inter VLAN routing. We're gonna drop the traffic. It will be all protocols. The source will be a port IP group of RFC 1918. So that's our private IPs and the destination will be the same thing. I also turn on threat management. So we're gonna detect and block, and I'm just gonna have this on medium and then we'll press apply changes. Now looking back at our devices, we could see that these access points or some of them need updates. So let's click on that. Now the updates are all done. I also label all of the access points. So AP01 to AP13, there will be a total of 17 access points at this site and two will be spare. But we will update the firmware on the two spare ones and we'll just leave it in storage. Another thing I do for my customers, we give them a drawing of where the access points are located on their floor plan. This isn't the actual hotel, this is one I found on Google, but you can see here we have AP1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth, so it's easy for them to find it. The last thing I do, I take the MAC addresses of all of the devices that I bought for the customers and put it in a Google Sheet. And I also reference that to the invoice that I bought them with. 
They ask you for the MAC address and the receipt when you're doing the RMA, so it's easy to locate. So now to answer some questions about why I do the pre-configuration before just doing it when I'm on the job site. One, it does save me a bit of time doing all the labeling here and I have more room within my office. When you go to different businesses network rooms, sometimes they're very small and congested and you can't place things where you want. Another reason I do it here, we do burn and test for all of our hardware. So I'm going to be leaving this set on for a few days to make sure all the hardware is good. The worst thing is when you go to a brand new job site, you have all new equipment and then you plug it in and find out that one of the power supplies is dead. Then you just wasted time going to that job site. Let me know if there's anything else you would do for the pre-configuration process. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.